We're going from 4.9 gigahertz to 5.1 and from 95 degrees down to 69. When I built my first ITX gaming PC with a Ryzen 7 7700X, I knew it ran hot. What I didn't realize was just how much free performance I was leaving on the table. Now to pretend to be an expert here, I give full credit to Optimum's video for pointing me in the right direction. But today we're tuning the CPU in two stages. First for maximum FPS, and then for way cooler temps without losing stock performance for my ITX build. First, we'll start with raw speed, then dial it in for my small form factor build. To create a baseline for our performance gains, I ran Cinebench for 10 minutes, Time Spy three times, and I did three Cyberpunk benchmark runs. The three Cyberpunk runs scored an average FPS of 39.34. The three Time Spy runs, we got an average CPU score of 13,191, and a total score average of 20,204. We were hitting a clock speed of 4.9 gigahertz, maxing out our temps at 95C and hitting 130 watts on the CPU and got a 1071 Cinebench score. Now let's hop into BIOS. Every BIOS will look a little different, but you'll want to find a section called Advanced CPU Settings or AMD Overclocking. Once you're in there, go to Precision Boost Overdrive and change it from Auto to Advanced. Next, go down to Curve Optimizer, select All Cores, then switch to Negative. The number you enter here, called the Magnitude, is how far you're shifting the CPU's voltage and frequency curve. The maximum you can set here is negative 30, and that would get you the best performance, but you could only get it on the best silicon quality CPUs. For example, my 7700X in this ITX build is stable at negative 20. Higher than that, and I started seeing crashes in benchmarks and games. The process is simple, start at 30, Test stability, and if it's unstable, meaning benchmarks crash or windows won't load, just bring the value down in increments of five until you're not crashing anymore. By dialing in this PBO2 offset, you're essentially getting free performance boost, higher clock speeds, and more FPS without increasing power or temperatures. And for an ITX build like mine, that's huge. After setting the offset to negative 20 on Cinebench, we were reaching a clock speed of 5.1 gigahertz over the 4.9. We got slightly better temps with the same CPU power package, and this time we got a score of 1131, over 5% increase. The three Cyberpunk runs we got an average FPS of 41.93, which is over 6% increase. In our three time spy runs, we got an average CPU score of 13,538, over 2% increase over baseline. Actually free FPS with absolutely no downsides. It's just literally free FPS. PBO2 tuning can give you a free FPS boost, but in my ITX case, I also care about keeping CPU cool and quiet. Let's go back into BIOS. Now let's go back into PBO. This time we're changing platform thermal throttle control to manual and setting it to 85 degrees. Now we're still hitting that 5.1 gigahertz, but only 85 degrees and consuming a bit less power. We got a Cinebench score of 1125 down from 1131. So we're barely under our last run, but running 10 degrees cooler. So we have faster speeds with less power and cooler temps over stock, which is just straight better. So now this is the next part I was super interested in. So with all the same settings, we go back into BIOS. And now we set an 85 watt power limit. This allows us to still reach our stock 4.9 gigahertz, but at a much cooler temperature and lower power consumption. I was blown away. It was running at 69 degrees during a 10 minute Cinebench run, and I could barely hear my computer. We're back to hitting 4.9 gigahertz, but at a way lower temperature and just using 87 watts. This is truly a much more optimized processor than what we started with. Now, like an actual idiot, I didn't update the BIOS before doing all of this. So I went back, installed the latest drivers, updated the BIOS and started over. This time I actually made it into Windows with a negative 30 offset and even completed a 10 minute Cinebench run. But then Time Spy crashed. I dropped it to negative 25, crashed again, and ultimately landed back at negative 20 where it was fully stable. The takeaway here is simple. There's free performance just sitting on the table with a Ryzen 7000 and PBO2 lets you unlock it. If you've got good cooling and don't mind higher temps, you can push for more raw FPS. But if you're like me in an ITX build with limited cooling, you could dramatically cut temperatures without sacrificing performance.